So did, did you have time to go to the Pablo Man to taste the wine and, and stuff? No, not even. And I love wine, but uh, no. But I, today I really have a, a bit of a sore throat and a headache, so I was like, maybe oh. stay off the wine. Yeah, but maybe easy, yeah. we'll get one after the show, and then it's easier for me to drink a little bit because before the show it's no go. I'm yeah. still a bit nervous, even after 15 years. To yes. <laughs> That's what the wine is for normally. Yeah. 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 To yeah. fix that problem. Really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they use whiskey, but I am yeah. more of the wine. Yeah. <laughs> You've done it whole tour it gets less but the first time you're on stage again after like one and a half years it's like nerve-wracking yeah. what about <coughs> the, the feedback of the tour are you happy with it uh, yes I must say because um, I was you know it's uh, it was a sold out tour and we did a lot of shows and uh, of course people had to wait a little bit longer than normally and uh, and people could sing along with the songs so you know if I think um, the most feedback that I saw was pretty positive the French audience are like you know like they want to have a party from st start the first second that you start playing this like, really, really are. Do, you, do you have an explanation why uh, your type of music the bands are mainly from Northern Europe rather than other parts? I think if one band is successful then other bands get inspired or people young people get inspired and you see like a generation later that there are more bands doing more or less the same and uh, that's the only explanation that I think is most most logic, actually. I think uh, the music fits in a wide range of, uh, for a wide audience. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I don't think we had any problems with playing with several bands in several genres. Of course, uh, sometimes you uh, play a little bit more harder songs when you're a metal festival. We end up with bands like Metallica and Iron Maiden and uh, the really American and English bands from the, from the, well, who are, who've been around for a more longer time. But it's all suits somehow because we have some similarities here and there. But we uh, also play on festivals like this with a totally different headline. This last album, we've been uh, we've been, been we've been um, inspired by a lot of bands that we grew up with, and it could be. We hear pieces of, you know, um, inspiration of Metallica, but also Iron Maiden. We even call the song with a wink, like Iron, <laughs> and it is really an Iron Maiden kind of song. Chris Isaac yeah. and, and, and Kim Wilde could be anything we like, you know. Uh, Andrew and Frankie. <laughs> can, <yeah>. Frankie goes to Hollywood. We like it yeah. all, you know. It's like it's not like we're we're afraid to touch any song called uh, called Sheenade, which is more of a dance beat. Yeah, if people think that's pop, it's still with heavy guitars and stuff. But it's you know we like to experiment. It's more like a soundtrack to uh, to uh, the comic, a comic that we produced ourselves. Um, and uh, it's, it's just we made three short movies with it to explain a little bit the background of the main characters and the storyline a bit better. And uh, I think the last part is uh, being released very soon, right? Yes, very yeah. soon. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes, yeah. it's really a, a comic book, a Marvel kind of story. If you're going to make a sequel to The Unforgiving, are yes. you going to make some more movies? Uh, yes, but we are also currently working on a script for a, a full-length movie in the same style that like, the short movies were made, actually. But the sequel of what you did already? No, 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 it's going to be one big movie of the whole story, the basic story, actually. Of the movie.